Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I'm super excited to introduce one of the smartest marketers on the planet. I guarantee after you listen to this podcast, you are going to be way smarter when it comes to building your business. And it's Pedro Jerez with businesswithintegrity.com. So if you're not familiar with Pedro, he's helped build close to a dozen companies to get over multi seven, eight figures in revenue in a variety of industries. And just if we're going to track his value, it's been over $100 million in value. Pedro, welcome. It's great to be here, Mark. So let's just get, let's just skip the pleasantries. Like, <laughs> what, what what do what do you know about marketing that other people don't know that moves the needle? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I think for a long time I had a lot of the same perspective that um maybe a lot of potential listeners have right now and or just people that you meet in your everyday life, which is um marketing is not fun, marketing is evil, marketing is all these different things. And it wasn't until I connected these thoughts, which is what marketing at the really highest level, at the most effective level, really what it comes down to is one fundamental principle and it's loving people. And what I mean by that specifically is that in loving people, therein lies the answer into why marketing works, why marketing doesn't work and why you should be passionate about it. Um, you got to understand that if your goal in anything in life is to, to, to spread a message, you know, you woke up one day and you got clear, you want to build something, you want to do something impactful in the world. The moment that that comes through you as something that you want to do as an entrepreneur, you got to acknowledge immediately that you're in the marketing business because the only companies that you know are the ones who are world-class at this. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the second piece is the, the part about loving people, which is, um, when you love people by default, you're willing to do the work. You're willing to do things to uncover what is true versus falling in love with your biases of, um, it, it's the difference between falling in love with your biases and the joy of discovering what's true. And you can only get there if you're truly passionate about serving the people that you serve, because that path takes work. And so it's easy sometimes to say, oh, let's just get this off the ground. Let's launch this thing or complain why it's something that didn't work. The delta between that and everything that you want is how committed are you to the person that you serve? And if we just remember that, um, and we, if we don't lose sight of that, then I think marketing become becomes this really fun activity um, because it's it's really just... Uh, a means to to serving people and and getting your message in front of people. Yeah, that's such a it's such a beautiful way of expressing the the power of marketing in loving people. I I remember interviewing Derek Sivers on the mm. podcast, and he wrote a marketing book essentially for musicians. And his argument was marketing is just being considerate. And but I th I think what you're doing is even taking it a step further. Because if we're not loving who we're serving, it's really easy as an entrepreneur to focus on all the other things. And at the end of the day, it's really about creating that value. And so if your focus is anywhere else, I agree, it's 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 certainly not a loving proposition for the other person. Yeah. It, it feels exploitative. And I'll say a couple other things that just come up top of mind for me, Mark, which is that something I fundamentally believe is that your emergency to make a sale is not your customer's emergency to buy. So like, that's just, just one thing to really remember, right? So it's like, okay, if we're going to actually create something impactful, like some other things that have really served me really well is that in loving people is also acknowledging that behind every single number that we love to obsess about inside of our business, like that's human beings, like real human beings with beating hearts. Um, 
who have real problems they're trying to solve in their life and or desires that they're trying to fulfill in their life, which is what business is. You're solving problems or fulfilling meaningful desires for people. Um, and if you like, you got to remember that, right? <laughs> because the moment that, that you remember that it changes, it changes how we perceive those numbers, you know, um, and how we look at those things. And, and there's a human element in every little part of business. And, you know, I just want people not to forget that because if we can remember that, I think little by little, you start to wake up to, again, what marketing truly is, which is human, human connection. No, absolutely. I'd love to know your backstory and how you became a world-class marketer and you built, you know, th th all these, these companies, either your own or for other people. And now you've got business with integrity. Like where does it begin? <laughs> how much time you got? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm joking, but, um, uh, I, I think to understand me and my passion for marketing and business, um, I think it really starts first with an obsession, which started for me when I was five years old. Um, I was very fortunate to have a dad who um, entered entrepreneurship um, as a child and really embraced personal development due to a network marketing opportunity that he joined. So grateful for that, changed our family's life. Uh, but it wasn't until we ended up taking a trip to Las Vegas. I was five years old. And I'm holding my dad's hand, walking through the MGM Grand Casino. And there's all these lights and commotion happening in a particular area. So my dad is curious. So we go there. And as we get there and we finally see what this is all about, um, it was the grand prize that the casino was advertising. And it was a million dollars in cash um, in stacks of $10,000 and $20 bills. Um, and I remember I've never seen this kind of money in my life. Like I from Dominican Republic. I grew up in the Bronx in a two bedroom apartment with my three sisters. Uh, but I remember this excitement that I felt on my little hand, just like squeezes my dad's hand. And I look at him and I can tell like the excitement that we share in that moment. And I, I, I can't make this up, Mark. I literally at five years old, I look at my dad and I say, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. And two things happened that day. One, a dream was born. Uh, but also too, um, it bonded me and my dad forever. Um, and I really wanted to make him proud and that served me for a long time. And also had to, it did not serve me. And I had to learn things about myself to, to build my character, to become the marketer I am today, but that's how it started. And that really drove me. And I wouldn't, I would say that things really shifted for me after making the money. So the 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 realization of that dream coming true in reality and the way that that unfolded mark um was i'm hosting an event I have 250 people there it was a two-day seminar 14 hours a day and i have people in a circle around this uh this ballroom beautiful chandeliers in this ballroom and everyone's sharing i asked them to share kind of what their takeaways are um and they're sharing. And at one point I look over by the entrance to the ballroom and I see my dad. I had invited him to be there. And in that moment, I see tears coming down his face as all this sharing is happening. And I've never seen that man shed a single tear in my life. Like that's what made that moment so significant. Also, it was the, the realization of a dream. But things didn't change for me until the next day. After all this unfolding, I went to bed, I wake up, and I remember the first thing that went through my mind, which was, now what? And that was the most single, most confusing thought that I ever had in my life. Um, and it reminds me of a headline that I saw yesterday on a different podcast. Uh, the, the CEO of Airbnb basically said, I was worth billions and I was sad. And I was nowhere near that reality, but fortunately I got that lesson much earlier. And it was because of that, that I really started to open my mind to like, oh, there had to be something better. There had to be some things I needed to learn about myself in terms of building my own character as a man. Um, but also beyond that, the way that I was approaching business, it couldn't just be about making money because obviously I made it and this is not mean nearly as much as what I thought it would. 
And so that was the beginning of me starting to open my eyes. Number one, building character as uh, a man and, 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 um, a word that really started to flow in my life was a word called generosity. And I was like, well, what does it actually look like to actually show up generous in business, independent of the money? That was the driving question. Um, and that's when I started to learn about impact driven entrepreneurship and people who were leading the way and said, screw business as usual, you know, um, what does it look like to actually create something that matters? What does it actually look like to create marketing that you're actually proud of? Um, and what does it actually look like to make an impact and leave a legacy? And there were people who were exploring these very things for themselves in business, in marketing. And me being the lifelong student that I am, I just became absolutely obsessed and reverse engineered some of the top brands um, in this impact driven space and reverse engineer their marketing, their advertising, their branding. And that was the beginning of, of how this all really happened for me. That's such a, an amazing story. And so, so touching as far as, you know, your, your dad and, you know, getting to that top of the mountain, which so many people want to get to and then realizing it's unfulfilling and, as far as the 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 cultural mountain of saying, hey, you know, do these things, and you're going to be happy. You know, get the money, right. get get the house, get the cars, um, you know, get the esteem of you know colleagues, and then you get all of it, and yeah. you're like, oh wait, it's it's unfulfilling. And I had a, <laughs> a similar journey, and I think if you're listening to this. You've heard me talk about this before, the that David Brooks book, the the second mountain, where the first mountain mm -hmm. is egoic. And I think it is an important egoic journey for people 100%. to climb. And yet you then transcend and you move on and you grow into the second mountain, which is other focused. It's about you know, community and it's about your spirituality and your faith. It's about love and intimacy. It's it's about uh, serving and your your vocation, and so it's a harder mountain to climb, but it's it's way more fulfilling. And it's uh, you know clearly you're you're doing that. And so when I think of a business with integrity or, or an impact driven business, I mean this is sort of a, a buzzword. I mean I think I have an impact business. I think most businesses are built, at least successful businesses are built to have this impact where you're the pebble in the pond and you, whatever you do, it, it affects others and, and it ripples out. Maybe there's a, a few companies out there, say, you know, tobacco or, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the companies that are, that are clearly doing things that are hurting us. Right. And, and it's, you know, just a profit motive, but even they could somehow, rationalize it when you say an impact driven business or a business with integrity what does that mean to you well before i answer that i just want to say uh just regarding the ego comment of the first mountain that you mentioned um i don't believe in no ego okay uh, but here's one of the most important lessons i ever learned it's like what's your ego for all right. What's so whenever, whenever I meet a team member who is extremely talented and is just operating from a perspective of level three leadership under like the tribal leadership scale, if people are familiar with that. It's all about I'm great, right? That's the that's how we define ego. Um, I don't want to shed that, right? What I want to say is like take that ego and then make it about the team, make it about the mission, right? So is your ego for yourself? Or is your ego for the team? Is your ego for the mission? We take that ego and we make it about the mission and we make it about the team. Man, there's some incredible things that we can absolutely do with that, right? And that's helping people ascend in, in their leadership and how they operate. Um, so I just wanted to say that because um, it's not about trying to get people to be something they're not. It's about getting people to evolve in their level of leadership 
so that we can all win together related to something we all believe in. Um, and so now to, to answer your question about, um, <laughs> now to answer your question related to, you know, what, what is, what is business with integrity mean to me? Um, it means a lot of things. And, and I think this is what separates how I see the world versus how a lot of people see it. I think we, we're always very quick to define things and say, this is what this means. Um, where I really encourage people to have the courage, you know, people ask me like, Hey, Pedro, where do you learn the most in your life? Here's a very egoic answer. The reality is that I learned the most from me. And the reason for that is because I have the courage to truly listen to what is moving through me on a daily basis. Right. And the wisdom that life is already flowing through me. If I'm so courageous to create the space to actually listen to that. Right. And so, um, I think that we're all here to do something. Um, that something is a very personal journey that I believe is usually discovered on the other side of just making a commitment in life to say, I'm going to be generous with my life. So our tagline at business of integrity is be generous. Okay. Because I believe that if you have the courage to live a generous life and build a business in a generous way, that even though you might not have the clarity and the answers immediately, when you decide to go on this journey, you will find the answers because of your commitment to how you, how you've decided to show up as a human being and as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. Um, and I think we all have in inherently something that we're here to do. Right. Um, so when I think about business of integrity, I think about, um, an entrepreneur and a business that is choosing to show up in the marketplace in a very generous way. So what does that actually look like? Well, in the way that you craft your branding and how you present yourself to the world, right. That can also be in your marketing. Like, here's a question for you. Are you proud about how your business is marketing itself in the world? Like, that's great, right? Like if you can say that, like, yeah, I'm proud about the way that my company is showing up in the world. Um, are you proud about the impact that your company's having? And I live from the fundamental belief that impact doesn't stop with the income that your business generates, right? You see, there's a lot of big problems in the world. And yes, you can solve some of those problems through the products and services that you create. But I believe that the impact that a business has doesn't have to stop there. Right. And that as entrepreneurs, we all have things that we're being called to champion. The question is, are you going to step up and lean into what life wants you to champion? And I think that to the people that much is given, you have an opportunity to do a lot of good with that. And here's one of the discoveries that I learned along the way that it's actually very good for business as well. Right. You know, what doing business of integrity looks like is like, well, how do you show up for your customers? You know, do you make serving them beyond the sale a priority as well in your customer service? And we can go on and on and on and on. But for me, it's looking at all the areas of business and it's asking yourself, what's the level of generosity that you're showing up in all of those areas business? If you bring a certain level of generosity into those areas, then for me, that's a business that's showing up in integrity in the world. Yeah, there's so many things I love about that answer. But if I'm listening to this and I'm I'm in my car and I'm I'm going to a job I hate or I'm struggling as an entrepreneur, it the, the words may not land. And so this is where I want to parse out two things where I'd love to get a little bit more tactical. Yeah. And so the first the first issue I want to parse out is fear versus courage, number one. What do you do on a daily basis where you're you're fighting that that inner critic, that inner voice that's saying, this is too much risk, you can't afford it. This is, you know, name name the fear. You know, we're gonna feel it and then we have to move through it into courage. 
I want to know what do you personally do to help you maintain that so that you can show up and be generous, even at times where it, it's scary to be generous. So that's the first piece. The second you, piece, yeah. uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, please, please finish. Yeah, so that that's the first tactical piece I'd, I, I'd like to parse out. And then the, the second part uh, I, I want to parse out tactically is when you are in when you are marketing for impact there are certain psychological triggers that we know work so if it bleeds it leads for example <laughs> i have i have a uh, a headline avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes that's going to get a lot more clicks now my content may be aspirational but no one is I'm going to get way more clicks with a negative connotation type of headline versus something that says, this is how our land investors have the best, you know, land buying experience, right? Yeah. It doesn't land the same way. So, so I've got two tactical questions to parse. I love those, love those questions. It, so let's start with the first one. Yeah. So I think fear the to first courage. Yeah, fear to courage. So I think the first one is, I think there's this fallacy um, that one, we're not supposed to fear, fear, feel fear. And also the second thing is that um, uh, one that we're not supposed to feel fear, but also the second one that once you get somewhere that you don't feel fear. Um, as you were expressing this, I was like, oh, you mean every day? Like, yeah, every day I feel fear and every day I need to be courageous. Um, I was very great. I was very blessed um, to have a mentor who gave me a very simple framework, which has taken me years to integrate. And the reality is that I'm still integrating in my life every single day because it is a choice every single day. And eventually what these things do, if you choose to show up in the way that I'm about to describe, what it does eventually is it starts to raise your standard for what you expect of yourself and just how you show up in the world um, and how courageous you are and how you move through the world, knowing that you're not going to get it right every single time. And then the key is in that, that stop holding yourself to this impossible standard, right? Like just acknowledge you're a human being. I'm a human being. Mark's a human being. We're going to mess up sometimes. And it's up to us to like not create a big story about it and should be like, okay, that happened. I learned from it, build some character from it and move on. Right. I mean, that's 100%. really it. And so for me here, here, here's the framework. Here's the framework. The framework for me has always been when life gets hard, when I feel fear, when I feel challenge, number one, learning to relax and learning to like, let go. How that's do you it. do that? What do you do? It, it really, it really is that simple. When you say how, the answer is literally by relaxing, take a breath. Okay. Stop trying to control the world. It's so as entrepreneurs, um, we're so good at that. Like I was an absolute pro at trying to control the world, and it was limiting the level of impact that I can have in my life and my growth. And so the way that you do it is you literally relax and you make a conscious acknowledgement that I'm not going to try and control this and you literally let go. So like if we want to get deeper into like psychology and, and these different things and, and how we do those things, um, you know, the way that I always look at life and energy is that whatever comes into our life, whatever at some point we hold on to, if we feel fear, it's because at some point we've decided to hold on to it consciously or unconsciously, whether that trauma was given to us or whether we took it on, um, at some point we decided to hold on to it and we didn't let go of it. So now we feel what we feel, right? And so for me, the whole philosophy has literally been this simple. Whatever is stored inside wants to come out, which is why we feel fear, which is why we feel challenged, which is why we feel contracted, which is why we feel these different things. And so when life is offering a gift, for the very thing which is holding you back to come up and release itself, my philosophy in my life, I'm not saying it's the right philosophy for everybody, but what's worked for me is making a conscious acknowledgement in that moment to literally make a, make a conscious acknowledgement to relax, 
and to allow whatever's been stored inside me to actually release itself. And that usually feels intense as it's happening right? It usually feel an intensity of anxiety, usually feel an intensity of feelings, you know, um, which is when you have to be your own best teacher, right? So it's like in those moments that those things are happening, like don't go out and like drink more coffee. It's just going to create more anxiousness, right? So like right. you got to, you got to know yourself and you got to be willing to study yourself. Um, and you got to be willing to give yourself what you need in those moments. But for me, the fundamental belief that I operate in my life is that when those things are happening, there's a gift that's being given to me in this moment. And if I can receive that gift, then what's happening is that I'm actually expanding my character along the way. And the way I know that I'm expanding my character along the way, and here, here's how I know it. When those things happen again in my life, that would usually cause this ease in how I feel when they happen again. I usually feel very relaxed and that's how I know that I'm growing in life, that I can now bring a level, different level of posture, um, to certain moments that would make me crumble. And now I can actually stand tall in those moments. So like that, that's how I look at these things. It's very, very simple. I don't overcomplicate these things, but it served me very, very well. Very, very, you gotta be very courageous to do this. Um, but it's, it's, it's the best I got and what served me. I love it. I, it makes me think of, of two things. You know, number one, I have a, a business coach because this is something I struggle with. So I need the, that accountability. And he'll always say to me, you know, when I'm not acting courageously, he'll say, whatever resists, whatever you resist persists. So it's yeah. not, it's not going to go away. And as you were talking, I had, I had another phrase kind of pop up and it said, is this happening to me? Or is this happening for me? And not to get too woo-woo, but I actually do believe that I think everything is happening for us. Yes. And everything can be reframed. The worst things in life can be reframed. 100%. And I think what I would just encourage everybody to do is over time, um, over time, you know, just ask yourself as you're, as you're living enough life and you have enough awareness to like, see these things as they're unfolding. Um, I remember the first time that I, I consciously acknowledged that, um, I've never not been taken care of by life. Even when like things got really, really hard, even when the moments where like, I felt the worst and was the saddest and the most depressed and the, like, I somehow always made it through it. Like, I feel like I was always provided for, I was always taken care of. Um, and so therefore, um, like this is all happening. This is all happening. There's a gift that's begin that's being given to me in this moment. And like, just receive the freaking gift because otherwise what happens is like, these things have a way of playing out again and again and again and again until you get the freaking lesson. And so for me, if I know I'm here to do great things in this life, whether that's in my personal life, in my relationships, in my health, with my family, with my friends, to build community, these are all things that are really important to me in my life. Um, I know that only to the proportion that I can show up for the gifts that life is giving me, which most of the times feels really hard um, in, in how we're describing, do those things, do the magic and those things get to happen. And same thing as an entrepreneur. 100%, 100%. So let's go to the second question. And we're going to get real tactical from a marketing perspective. Okay, I love this. I absolutely love this question. So by the way, but the way that you framed um, what you described, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't see a lack of integrity in that. You know, from my perspective, it's education-based marketing, right? And so I'll give you just two of my favorite marketing campaigns of all time. One of them was run by a company called Patagonia. And, um, and this is, by the well, way, people this is, love that company. They absolutely love it. And by the way, that's by design, right? This is a great example of an impact driven entrepreneur of an impact driven entrepreneur who also has gotten really good at branding and marketing while staying true to their values. Right. And so there's a particular marketing campaign, which I love, which was called don't buy this jacket. 
And most people think about it as like this big New York Times ad that they ended up taking on the New York Times. But the reality is that it was all over the place. It was on email, social media, you know, all the assets they had available to them. So I would say that's the equivalent of what you described a moment ago. And so they went on to basically describe inside of this ad um, that, and they, they, they took out this ad in Thanksgiving, by the way, a day where like people should buy things. Um, right. And they were basically saying that people should buy less because of the impact that um, people have no clue that fashion is actually one of the greatest polluters, probably if not the greatest polluter of any industry in the world and that people should buy less, but should buy higher quality things. And then here are the things they should think about when buying a jacket. And there wasn't even a call to action to like buy their stuff, but they were educating their consumer about the problem in the fashion industry, which is in total alignment with their core values. And guess what? When people go out and then look up Patagonia, they'll see that they essentially promise to do all the things that other companies are not choosing to take a stand for. And that campaign was arguably one of the most successful campaigns that they ever ran. They stayed true to their values. Um, um, while educating their market um, and and it led to this massive success, literally millions of dollars worth of success. Here's another example of it. Uh, take a company like REI. You know, REI is a outdoors clothing company. So in 2015, for the first time, they had an experiment. And again, on Thanksgiving, the day where they'll make the most sales, they basically decided to shut down all of their stores. There's And the whole... Uh, campaign was opt outside and hashtag opt outside. Um, and this campaign, so the basic, all of their employees, they got paid time off on Thanksgiving day. Um, and most of their sales essentially come from in-person stores. Uh, and they were encouraging essentially all of their followers, all of their community and all their customers to opt out of Thanksgiving shopping and to go outdoors to be with their friends and their family. And what it did was this campaign absolutely went viral because you would never expect a company like this to do something like this. And they got millions of dollars worth of free press. Um, their employees were happy. Uh, their customers felt more connected to REI because they were staying true to their values. And guess what? When they opened the stores the next day, they broke every single sales record in their company history. So much so that they've ran the campaign every single year since 2015. And here's the other crazy part. Because it was meant as a call to action to their community, um, and the message was a message that could go viral, um, there's so many new people who found out about REI as a result of the press, as a result of the sharing, as a result of people being outdoors using the hashtag and brought an insane amount of new customers into their stores. So here's the problem, Mark. The, 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 the problem is that it's not that these things are not possible. The problem is that people lack the creativity to lack the creativity to actually show up in a way that would be congruent with their values. Um, but all the answers are there. Like there's already so many people leading the way. You just got to make a commitment um, and be willing to figure it out. And there's a lot of great examples to point to. Yeah, I think that those are two great examples. I don't think it's just creativity. I think it's back, back to that first question I asked you. How do you move from fear to courage? Those are courageous moves to live your values so deeply that you will risk losing money. Yeah. <laughs> and what worked, why it worked is because we, we so, as human beings, when we see the real deal, we see the authenticity, when we see, you know, because everyone's, oh, companies, what well, companies are just a bunch of people. So, it. It, you know, when a company is, aligned with their values so deeply and so authentically they're irresistible but you're gonna i guarantee if i was in that board meeting there must have been a few <laughs> people saying you know you guys are crazy this is the biggest you know day of our sales and yeah. we have employees and we have payroll and we have fixed expenses that are not going away and yeah. here's the crazy sure part enough, mark they here's the, the crazy part 
Yeah. I, I just, I just got to say this and because I'm a data person at the end of the day, and I like to point to real data on why this matters. And I just want to say this real quick, um, which is that there's a few things that have happened in our world. So if you go back to like the early uh, 1990s, that's kind of like the beginning of the internet era. And we didn't know it at the time, but the reality is that this thing massively transformed our lives in ways that most of us, I don't think, have even fully acknowledged yet as entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that is that there were three things that really happened since the 1990s to present day. And one of those things is the rise of women in the workplace. Um, there are more women now starting business and in executive roles um, than there has ever been in history. And there was an abundance of this that really took place over the last 30 years. Um, so now all of a sudden we have women's way of thinking in leadership roles um, and starting businesses and, and creating change in the world in that way um, and are a lot more vocal, right? Um, the second thing that took place in our world was that was the rise of the millennial generation. So I don't know if people know this, but the millennial generation now is literally the largest workforce in of all generations. So much so, in fact, that um, here in just the next couple of years, it'll be 50% of the workforce. Now, what separates millennials is two things. Number one is that there's a lot of them. And I think the second thing is their unique way of looking at the world, meaning they actually have values and they're willing to be vocal about those values. And But the second, the third thing is that they're connected people, meaning they grew up in an era where as they were growing up, they were learning to text and communicate and say all these different things. And so now for the first time, companies are needing to match the values of those millennials uh, to actually thrive in today's world. Never before was that needed. Never before have you had a generation that believed the things that they did and were willing to be so vocal about them. Um, and then the third thing that's happened in the world is that you have this advancement of technology. And so this boom of technology, thanks to the internet and now AI and all these different things, is that we literally live in a world where um, if you don't like something like we live in a world of instant reviews. And so like brand loyalty was not, is not what it used to be. Um, like before you had a customer, no matter what your experience was, because you didn't know that there was 10 other options to buy that same exact product. You just bought it, right? Because it was the one that was closest to you. Um, but you don't need to do that anymore. You know, we live in a world now where like, if you don't like something, then you can change or you look at a hundred reviews before you decide to purchase something and see what other people are saying. And so we live in this trust economy. And so I know we don't have the time to really go into this, but the reality is that all three of those things matter. And so when you put all three of those things together, they point to operating in a way of higher integrity and higher generosity in the marketplace. And that's where the world is going. So the question I always ask everybody is like, or what I encourage people to do is like, instead of waiting to be disrupted, just look at where the world is going and position yourself to thrive 10 years ahead of it. Because this is not where the world is going. This is where the world is now, right? But you still have a unique opportunity to get a leg up in your industry. 100%. It, it makes me think of uh, uh, a guy I heard speak at a mastermind group, George Bryant who was in the military, uh, and he, he would say, you know, relationships beat algorithms. And it's true. In the way that he looks at marketing, it's just being loving and considerate in this relationship. And so often you'll look at a business and they'll put all this energy into getting the customer. And then they just completely fall apart when it comes to fulfilling those expectations, keeping that customer happy and, and, you know, truly solving the problem. And, uh, so, you know, when you were talking, it just really made me, made me think of that. Well, Pedro, I could talk to you for hours and hours. <laughs> I want to be respectful of your time. So, uh, before we get to the tip of the week, I do want to just mention our sponsor, which is flight school. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters or rehabs, renovations or rodents. 
And as you're going up that mountain, you're going to have us that have done this thousands of times in your corner. And I know what you're thinking. Well, with the tuition, the tuition, it ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed, you're going to make it all back in 180 days or less. Just show us you did the work. So learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a free consultation. Landgeek.com forward slash training. Hey, Drew Jerez. What is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives, increase their integrity, whatever you've got. My tip of the week and something that I've that I choose to do pretty often is just take a moment to stand in front of the mirror, just look at yourself um, and just ask yourself, like, do you love what you see? Do you love how you're showing up in the world? Do you love how you're showing up in business for your team, for your employees, um, for your vendors? Um, do you love how you're showing up in for your health? Are you love how you're showing up for your family? Um, for your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, kids. Um, and if the answer is yes, then congratulations. Thank you for being one of us. And if not, then just have the courage to do something about it and recommit. That's it. That's all life is. Just an opportunity to recommit every single day and to get on the path of the life that you want to live and that's within your hands every single day. I, I love that tip. And we always are talking about relationship, relationship. But the most important relationship is the relationship you have with yourself. And, you know, so often people, for whatever reason, I mean, we can, you know, go deep into psychology, but their relationship with themselves gets sidetracked because of shame. This global feeling that I'm bad as opposed to, which is really productive, which is guilt. I did this. I could have showed up better for my myself, my family, my business, my community. And it stings that I didn't. And I'm going to take that sting and I'm going to repair and I'll move forward. And that is more productive than just feeling, oh, the shame of it and feeling like I'm bad. I, I can't do this. I don't have these things. It's, it, it's really not true at all. Um, my tip of the week is get more of the sage wisdom from Pedro Jerez and start building your business with integrity. Just go to businesswithintegrity.com, businesswithintegrity.com. Learn more there. If you're getting value from the podcast, please share it with a friend and just do us three little favors because the quality of guests like a Pedro will keep coming back because they're going to check our reviews just like they're going to check your reviews on your land site. So please follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review. Support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So please do it. But even if you don't want the book, just do it selfishly for yourself so we can continue to get great guests like Pedro. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Pedro. Let freedom ring. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.